Hello again, everyone. My name is Chris Doran. I'm a technical sales specialist for ITM Instruments. Thank you for joining us today uh, via our webinar uh, brought to you by ITM University. Today's topic is principles of thermal imaging, how infrared technology is utilized for a variety of applications presented by CLEAR. Throughout the presentation, uh, please mute your microphone. The presentation will last between 40 and 45 uh, minutes. I was about to say seconds. Um, and we'll take time at the end <laughs> for Q&A. Um, throughout the presentation, please do not be shy to send in all your questions. If, we, if you do have a question pertaining to a particular slide or something that we're covering, we can stop uh, at a couple points during, uh, during the presentation to get to your questions as well. So ITM and FLIR have been working closely together for many years. We pride ourselves on being a leading distributor of FLIR in Canada. This is a result of our dedication to offering you our product expertise, service, and competitive pricing. Today's presentation is um, presented by Manny Alsaid, Eastern Canada District Manager, District Sales Manager, uh, and he looks after all solution segments uh, within FLIR. Uh, Manny has been with FLIR since 2012. Manny, I'll turn the presentation over to you. Thank you, Chris. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon, or I should say morning, afternoon, depending where you are. For this uh, presentation training uh, with ITM, thank you, ITM, for setting this up. I really appreciate all the webinars that you guys worked on and giving us a chance to talk to people and, and get you know our information out there. Uh, I appreciate you guys joining here, you know, for this afternoon. I know it's probably beautiful weather in different parts of the country. Hopefully it is beautiful where you are and all that. And thank you for taking the time to listen to me yeah, for a little bit. I'll try and make it as interesting as possible without boring you too much. So let's get started. So principles of thermal imaging. What does that mean? Let me just go to the right screen. Actually, just during the presentation, it's not load up bandwidth. I will shut off my webcam. Not just, I don't want you guys to see me, but just so it doesn't cause any issues and all that, but I'll come back on a little bit later. All right, here we go. Principles of thermal imaging. Let's look at the agenda. So we're going to start with the introductions. We already did. IR theory, how do thermal cameras work, important concepts of thermal imaging, why do we see, why do we want to see heat, and what solutions are offered between cameras and software? How do thermal cameras work? The IR theory. Well, the definition of the IR theory is infrared is an electromagnetic radiation or wavelengths that are longer than the visible light that we normally see. Where the human eye can see between 400 to 700 nanometers, the infrared basically starts from the one to the above higher uh, longer wavelengths normal. That is broken up in different uh, sections here. So in the case of visible light, which is 400 to 700 or 0.4 to 0.7 micrometers, near infrared is 0.7 to 1.7, mid wave three to five, and then long wave of 8 to 14. Most of FLIR's handheld cameras for typical industrial applications and building are in the long wave, uh, wave band, level, which is what these ones are represented by here. These are longer wavelengths that we don't normally see, but we feel as we, you know, on a hot day, the sun heat is what you're feeling, that's infrared energy. Infrared is emitted by everything. anything in the universe that is not zero Kelvin, there isn't anything that's zero Kelvin, will have immediate, some type of energy or infrared energy being emitted. Water with ice will emit less energy than fire. That's typically the physical law. Physical law. So we could get more energy being radiated from hotter objects than cooler objects. The cameras basically convert that image to a, an intensity. So if you can imagine, this little image here is an infrared detector. Those are little pixels in your cameras, getting the wave bands, heating them. They're actually being heated by the wavelengths, we apply a Stephen Boltzmann law, we calculate it, and then we create a, a value, a temperature value. As you can see, imagine this is a grid on a camera with different temperature points. Then what we do is we put intensity to color, we colorize these intensities to represent an image, hence why we get our infrared images based on the energy detected by each detector. So if you're confused, <laughs> which is sometimes gets a little confusing, in basic terms, we just see heat or we see temperature differences. The cameras show you a pixel by pixel temperature difference what you're looking at. If cameras do not emit anything, they actually absorb energy as they're being used. Now there are important concepts to remember or when you're choosing an infrared camera. They are resolution, the spot size, and consideration of the transparency and reflection in, in your application basically. Why is resolution important? Well, 
Lower resolution cameras have larger pixels or larger detectors, which means the images that you will get will look blurry, won't give you definition, won't give you detail. Versus if you compare the image from the left all the way to the image on the right, you see the higher the pixels, the more easily we can identify what the target we're looking at. This is the same thing with our TVs these days. You know, we, we used to have 1080p, now we have uh, 4K TVs. They put more pixels, small little pixels within the same build of you to give us more details. Same thing with thermal imaging. Why is that important? Let's look at two images of an electrical application. On the left hand side, the top left, the image is showing there's a hot spot max. It's actually 98.9F or 37 degrees Celsius. So imagine if it's a day that's warm, 30 degrees outside, for example, Celsius, and you're trying to look for the hottest spot within your field of view, this is showing you 37. You're probably going to say to yourself, you know what, something hot, but nothing to worry about. I'll look at it next time I'm back. What about the picture below? Same scenario. Connections on a transformer. We're seeing the hot spot is 53 uh, Celsius, which is quite hot if you think about it. But it's critical, but maybe not so bad. We'll have to investigate. But now what happens if you get a higher resolution camera for the same conditions, same time frame, same distance? Look what happens. That spot before where we thought it was only 37 degrees Celsius is now 83 degrees Celsius. It's 50 degrees hotter versus what is on the left. Your decision making, this is critical. There's something wrong right here. This can cause a shutdown, especially on days when it's needed. The hottest days where people are using their air conditioning, all kinds of equipment, or the coldest days in the reverse, this could be causing a problem. You don't want these situations. And the image on the bottom, look at what happens. Look at the difference. Almost 100 degrees Celsius between the two. Your decision making is very critical between the right camera. That's what we always say. Make sure you know what resolution you're using. Not every infrared camera will give you the right accurate information. It'll give you a temperature, but it won't necessarily give you the correct temperature. You got to make sure that it's something you have properly qualified. ITM representatives or the FLIR representatives, we will guide you to make sure that you have picked the right solution, okay? And that's based on the spot size ratio. Spot size, you might've heard of it from terms using these earlier style of guns, laser guns. If you might've looked on the side, you might've seen six to one, which means that to measure a target size of a specific amount, let's say one inch, I can measure it at six inches away. At one foot, I'd have to be six feet away maximum to get an accurate measurement. Otherwise I'm gonna be getting uh, an averaging of everything, like in this case. If I go in higher spot size ratios, then I'm able to put more smaller field of view on target to give me more accurate information. Same concept with the uh, infrared camera. I'm putting a lot more pixels to the target to give me details. Let's see another example. Typical laser gun. We're looking for a hot spot in these uh, fuses right here. You're going to be scanning around, you know, the connection points up and bottom, looking at the wires. That's what everybody typically does from a distance. And you look at the temperatures and you say, oh, I saw something, there, there's a hot spot there, right? Something is causing heat. But you're not sure, that's the problem. Your decision-making is not as accurate enough because you're not sure where that is. With an infrared camera, you're able to quantify that value and give you quality. You can literally pin the tail on the, to where the problem is. To identify and you can see that where you're measuring 77 you're getting 106 points this is much more accurate reading as you have more pixels imagine you putting you know a lot more of those little laser guns side by side to create the same grid array as a thermal imager remember these are these temperature readings can be done with like our small handheld cameras the little c5s or tgs as well at the right distance though. some misconceptions can thermal cameras see through walls we get asked these questions all the time can it see through things? This is a clip, or I should say a photo from the uh, movie Fast and Furious Hobbs and Show Up in 2019. They're using a FLIR camera in the movie. They put it, put it right to a wall and they can pretend to be seeing behind the wall, all the people, the hostages and all the operations right through the wall. And this is a metal door, I think, or, or something of that sort. That's fake, guys, this is Hollywood. Hollywood, unfortunately, gives a misconception that thermal cameras can see through multiple layers of walls. We cannot see through walls. That's a misconception. We will, unfortunately, the way we see things though, is we see heat transfer through conduction. If you look at this example here, we have a, wooden, a wall, a drywall, you have wooden beams, wires, and you see the screws on, on the, uh, on the, on the uh, wooden beams. Why do we see those? We're not seeing through the wall, drywall to be able to locate them. It's just because there's temperature differences, absorbing more heat, they're conducting it to the 
inside the wall, we're able to pick these things up and the camera can, is sensitive enough to be able to see it. So we're not seeing through the wall, there's just enough heat conduction that we're able to pick it up on the surface. Okay, so we do not see through things. What else are the limitations? Well, we're looking at the temperature of, of uh, this uh, child right here. We're trying to see what the temperature of their face is. With the glasses on, we're seeing 75.6. Glasses off, you're seeing 96.1. Quite a bit of difference between the two. Why is that? Well, infrared cameras don't see through regular glass, silica glass. So our windows at home, which are designed to keep heat out or heat in, will not allow infrared energy or very little infrared energy to go through. So we don't see through regular glass. We don't see through water, mirrors, and shiny surfaces become very reflective. However, you might have worked with infrared windows before. FLIR makes a variety of them, uh, round or we have a large format as well, that use something called a calcium fluoride, which looks and feels like silica glass, but in actuality, it's a different kind of material that allows a percentage of the visible light and a percentage of the infrared light to go through. So that's how we're able to see and use a, for, uh, an infrared camera. But typically, regular glass will not allow you to see anything. If at any point anyone has any questions, please uh, you know, put it in the chat box and all that, and I'll be more than happy to answer your question. So why do we want to see heat? As I explained before, it's very critical to make sure that it's for decision making. We're looking for the hot and or heat anomalies because it indicates problem. And it, it is basically to save, avoid any accidents, any failures, shutdowns. Uh, these are all costly issues that can happen. So it's all about decision making. That's why we want to detect these problems. Just like in the health world, they want to, especially these days, they want to look for people who have temperature. Well, the same thing with, with the industrial world. Is we want to make sure there's nothing overheating, uh, out of norm, basically. Typically, you see the electrical world uses the infrared cameras because a lot of you safely measure temperatures at a safe distance, document, and create historical data to refer to. Mechanical world, you can look at a motor bearings, conveyor belts, make sure nothing's overheating or out of balance. Building world, missing insulation. Uh, air infiltration, water infiltration, overheated electrical plugs and wiring, you know, variety of applications. So these are all different segments that use infrared for different applications, but looking for heat anomalies on the surface. What else? Believe it or not, FLIR has a large division for our security. We make cameras for perimeter security, borders, um, uh, airports, and now as we, obviously as of last year of COVID, we have a lot of cameras used for fever detection, uh, all the major airports in Canada have uh, infrared cameras at the screening x-ray points to check to see if you have a fever. Uh, we also make uh, R&D, actually, and one other thing, we make traffic control cameras. In Montreal, actually, it, it's the largest city in the world that uses clear cameras, thermal and visible, to control traffic sections, uh, the traffic lights, and all that. So that's really a large array of what we can do with our cameras. R&D automation, uh, you know, from science segments, so defense research, electronic circuitry inspection, they're all looking, they're all always using infrared cameras. It makes it easier to see patterns and anomalies. And obviously agriculture, if the ground is too dry, veterinary, if an animal has a, any injuries and all that, you can see with infrared cameras. So quite an extensive, broad range of applications. So what are the solutions of cameras that we can offer? Now, we're not expected to kind of read this. This is very small fine print, but it just gives you an idea that FLIR has a solution for anything you need. We really do. We offer a vast array, but not every system is the right one for your application. That's where we have to help you qualify, make sure that you're getting the right device. We don't want you to get the wrong item and then end up not using it or having an accident or making a wrong result or wrong reporting. Let's look at the camera options. You guys might have heard of the uh, Clear One mobile compact style camera between C5. These are ranging from the 400 to 930 Canadian dollars. Then we get into more of the you know more industrial point and shoot type cameras, larger storage capacities, larger batteries, higher temperature ranges, and all that. They go up a little bit in the higher uh, price points. Then we get into the professional series cameras. These are for quick troubleshooting inspections. Somebody has a maintenance team says, "Guys, I just want you to find some problems, go look, get it, come back and report it to me." So for quick reporting, these are what these are great for. The professional series cameras are designed for high-end professional in the sense of you have to supply a report for insurance, for a customer, for your major boss and all that, and you have to create historical trending data. We need to write notes, capture voice notes, GPS coordinates, write things, all kinds of things. 
that's where these high-end cameras will come into the professional series where the lower the cameras that are called not the lower end but the lower resolution cameras will not be able to do they don't capture notes they don't record voice notes you can't adjust focus you can't change lenses it's very inflexible they're point and shoot that's what they're designed for okay oh, i just see a question come up Are you so the, question, to the first question? Wait. Sorry, I was just the uh, yeah. Let me see here. Yeah. Please elaborate. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Please elaborate on the use in buildings like installation and other mechanical services. Um, okay. Uh, so, in example, for buildings, if you're doing building inspections, you're looking for water infiltration. You're looking for missing insulation. You're looking for overheating wires in walls. So let's say all those older buildings typically you know there's been rewires happening so you're getting some shorts and all that and you want to localize them make sure there's nothing uh, no no fire basically looking for any damage or no fire incident um for for motoring so if, you, if the building has some kind of a pump system or or uh, i don't know what what application but you know hvac system, you can look at you know your hvac units uh pumps make sure they're not overheating remember you're able to get a thermal uh you know diagram of the Im image of the actual device to see if there's any anomalies where you, with a regular laser gun, will not show you that. You're just guessing where you might be looking. So that's where it's recommended for building is you get a variety of things that you can do with the thermal camera for buildings as well. Um, are there any, the next question is, are there any components that degrade over time within a thermal camera? Other night vision usage such as starlight have tubes that have usage life in hours. No, so a thermal camera is not an active component. There's nothing being emitted. It's just literally imagined to be, it's almost like a thermal couple. It receives energy and it converts that intensity to a value, which we colorize that value. That's how you get an image. There is no color in thermal. We provide a variety of color palettes to intensities of, of, of energy. That is it degrade. Yes, of course it does, but not in the typical way that you would see. There's no mechanical. There are some cameras that we do have that have mechanical coolers, but those are specialized cameras for gas section or R&D applications. But the typical long wave cameras don't have many mechanical mobile parts other than the focus motor and uh, you know other applications. Our cameras have a two-year parts and labor warranty and a 10-year detector warranty. That's how much we guarantee. There's still customers out there that have cameras that are 20 years or older that are still being used out there. Just to show you a testament of clear quality of products. So next question, are there any, are there IR cameras that can see hydrocarbons? Yes, so there are, but it's a specialized cooled camera. And actually, uh, we have two different models. We have something called an uncooled GF77 camera, or we have a GF320, and we have an explosion uh, is intrinsic or non-intrinsic camera. We can get you more details on that, uh, Chris, if you want to write that down, and then we will send information to, to the customer. Uh, which of these cameras is not is recommended for home inspections? It's funny, we had that same question just before in the, in the French presentation. Um, so the, what I always tell everybody is, 320, 240 is, should be the minimum resolution you should do for home inspection. It gives you enough flexibility of resolution to see details at a at proper distance. Anything lower, you're guessing. Sensitivity is very critical for home. I didn't mention that in here, but it is very critical. Make sure you have a good sensitivity of a camera. The person you speak to will explain that to you. Uh, choosing it. Home inspections, you want flexibility. If you're going to be doing a lot of home inspections, always go with an E76 at least. It gives you Focus, flexibility of choice of lenses. Um, you can write notes, record voice notes, measure distance. You have a lot of options versus, let's say, so an E76 is 320-240, and E8 is also 320 by 240 pixels. But the E8 has no focus, no notes. It's for quick point and shoot. Now, if you're doing one inspection a month, E8 is fine. If you're doing two inspections a day, that many, you know, 10 a week and all that, then the CE76 is the best option for you. At least if you start getting to commercial buildings, schools, and gymnasiums and all that, you need higher resolution because you need the pixels to see far away. E8 doesn't give you lens options. You can't change it. E76, you can choose wide angle, zoom lens, regular standard lens, and more, and then so on and so forth. So 32240 E76 is the best one. And obviously, you go up the higher end as you get into bigger models. Um, if resolution is the next question, if resolution is essential to accurate readings, would it be any benefit with a mobile? I'll be to, to go with a mobile or compact option. It depends on what you're trying to measure. So one question I always ask everybody is, what is the smallest target you want to measure? If you're telling me you want to measure a 12 gauge wire from 10 feet away, then the compact mobile device will not do that for you. 
but if you use the right resolution camera, it can be done. So it depends. I mean, if if you're, I, that all depends on the. We always ask. I always my question to everyone is, what is the smallest target you want to measure? What is the distance, the maximum distance you'd like to measure that target from? If you tell me 12 gauge and 10 feet, I'm not going to tell you go with the more wide compact. That's just not going to work. You need something higher resolution. Right. Can the reading the so, next question? Sorry, Chris, did you want to say something? Yeah, I'm going to actually, I'm going to jump in just so you have a little bit of time to absorb the questions uh, as they come in and, uh, and kind of prepare an answer. So the next question that we did have uh, was based on the, can the readings of camera be calibrated or certified uh, for specific accuracy? So every FLIR camera you purchase will come with a calibration certificate to the lens. So if it has interchangeable lenses, and you bought it with multiple lenses, each lens will have its own calibration certificate. Or if it has a fixed lens, like the compact or mobile, uh, the, the FLIR one doesn't have calibration certificate. I believe the C5 uh, will have it. The TG series and the EE series should have it as well. Perfect. Uh, we can continue on this. Okay. Fun question. Can a camera sensor be damaged if we aim it at the sun? Yes. So yes, just like your eyes, if you look at the sun, you get it, it spots well. A camera sensor, these types of cameras, these type of detectors, you'll actually burn the pixels and all that. And yes, you can damage it and you lose. How bad is it? Obviously, it depends. That's hard to tell if it's going to change the accuracy. Remember, we need a lot of pixels. If you burn one pixel or two pixels and you still have, you know, thousands of other pixels, it won't be so bad. But yes, it will burn. So never point it at the sun because the camera will try and measure the temperature of the sun. And we know how hot the sun is. So it'll never get there. Definitely. Uh, we'll take a couple more and then we'll go back to the presentation. And as I mentioned in uh, in the intro, we will have time at the end of the presentation to answer any and all. We're getting a lot of them. This is great. Please continue. Um, what is the reflected temperature on my E8 and when would I need to adjust or change the setting? Great question. Oh boy, that, that's, a, that's an ITC question. But basically, remember, you're measuring the surface temperature of target. If the target, target doesn't emit enough of its energy, it's reflecting a lot more that's what the reflect is. It's basically what is it reflecting that energy? And that's what that represents. And that you need to go to our ITC training website that ITM can guide you to, and that'll give you more definite. That's too long to explain right now in this uh, in this webinar. Definitely. So we'll go back to the presentation for now. As I mentioned, please continue to uh, chat in your questions, and we'll get to them either a little bit later in the presentation or at the end. Excellent. So to the professional theories question, uh, cameras, as I mentioned before, these are more for uh, you know if you wanted to submit reports to insurance companies. Um, big bosses or for historical training. There's a variety of versions. We have the, we call it the radar gun style, which is a fixed lens to screen. So these are good for straight horizontal looks. If you're going to do a lot of looking up, behind, or under, we recommend going with a pivoting type camera because these, you can point the lens to the ceiling, still have the screen in front of you. You can turn the lens 180 degrees to the ground and still have the, lens, the screen in front of you. So you never lose sight of the screen. Or if you want to look underneath, let's say in cabinets or under things and all that, you just point the lens forward and the screen always stays visible. You're not you know, being, doing weird gymnastics to be able to see your imagery and all that. So that's where we say, if you're doing a lot of flexible in the space inspection, a lot of movements, a lot of angles, pivoting is your best bet because you don't hurt your back and all that. But again, it depends on your budget options. Okay. Now, cameras is one half of the story. There's a second half of the story. It's great to buy a great camera, the right tool. That's very important. But if you don't have the right software to do the reporting for you, you might as well throw away the camera because it's just going to be a nightmare to try and remember. Your reports protect you. Your reports generate income for you. And if you do the right reporting, the right method, it's going to look very professional on who you are. Okay. FLIR last year introduced FLIR Thermal Studio. We replace or will be replacing the FLIR Tools Plus software. Some of you might have, might be still using it or have heard of it before. This will be discontinued in, in the future. So keep an eye out, please, for it. Uh, FLIR Thermal Studio is what's going to be replacing this. Now, why do we do that? Well, we wanted to make something that is very effortless, efficient, and flexible. It is. You're going to see that Thermal Studio is a very powerful software compared to FLIR Tools Plus. Other than these options, I'm not going to read them all. Let's focus on some of the main points. Number one thing. For those who might have used Clear Tools Plus, we used to have it integrate with Microsoft Word, which means that you want to create a template, you do it in Word, you would choose the template and it create the report in Microsoft Word. 
That was great, but the problem is every time Microsoft did a change, an update to Windows or Microsoft, it was a nightmare for Flirt. The amount of bugs that got created were just endless. Imagine with multi languages and everything else that happened, it just became too costly and too hard to manage. Clear decided we're not going to do that anymore. We basically stopped doing the integration and we designed a new software that has its own word processor within it. Some of the main features, other than obviously these main ones, but batch editing, where Fluid Tools, if you wanted to make a change to images, you'd have to go in one by one to change emissivity, reflective temperature, color palette, whatever it may be. You can do it in multiple images, thousands of images in one shot. Live view map, you do drone scanning for roof scanning, you'll be able to see the movement of the actual, as it moves around, you'll see the coordinates move around. Image filtering, we can do some great image uh, filtering uh, from the videos to people who do gas leak detection and be able to really see some great details. Rapid report, this is a great feature. You create an icon of the template on your desktop, drag the images and boom, right onto the icon, it'll create a report from that template. You don't have to open the software, it's a much quicker way of doing reports. And you can do an effect for video, uh, videos from the, or video, images captured from a drone. So a lot of great features. There is a free demo available that you can download uh, from our website, just Google FLIR Thermal Studio uh, Pro, and it'll give you an option to download it. There is no time limit, except every time you try and analyze, you won't be able to analyze images. Anytime you try and create a report, it's always gonna have the FLIR demo uh, on it uh, and on the images as well. And if should you ever decide to buy it, whatever changes you were able to do, will be stored. There's nothing lost. You just unlock with the license and continue using it as, uh, as option. We do have three versions. We have the free version, which still gets a license, but you'll get renewed automatically, but you still get a little license to enter it in. We have the starter version, basic features, and then we'll have the pro version, which again, online will be comparisons for that. Now, some more great features that I'd like to kind of talk about, and we'll show you some more afterwards in the demo. You can do polyon measurements. So if you have weird shapes, you can do amazing, or even have a magic wand as well. For those who might have used our older uh, cameras that have the MSX, now FLIR had something called, it's a, a patented technology that we overlay visible image on top of the thermal image. Now, if you look here, you notice the little pockets on top of this uh, bookcase, so the windows were not lined up properly to the visible image. Well, with FLIR tools, you were not able to line up the images. With Thermal Studio, you're able to literally drag the visible image to the right area. So now you're getting the full the visible details overlaid on top of the thermal details. Wait for people who use the old style C3 cameras and all, and you'll be able to do this now. Again, for building guys, you might like this one. You take it because I know sometimes people take pictures from weird angles and they couldn't get the right one, didn't have rotation capability. Well, now Thermal Studio allows you to rotate and crop images. That's a great feature that was added. For those that use drones, well, you have the ability to show the maps. You'll be able to see the GPS coordinates. Uh, and then if you do a, a video from the images, you'll actually see the video moving where the images were taken from. And that, that's all done live within the uh, software as well. Advanced formulas. Now, FLIR tools had a little bit of ability to do some formulas, but it was very basic. With FLIR Thermal Studio, you can do advanced visual basic formulas. We give you some and you can even add more. You can import them if you want. So anybody who's familiar with visual basic, you can actually enter them in and use them if you want to within Thermal Studio and during your reports. In the software, we have great extensive video for training. Uh, we have uh, uh, samples you can download as well. All kinds of things available to help you out in choosing the right, uh, basically understanding what you need to find out. We also added a feature called inspection route or routing solution. Chris, do you want me to take some more questions or should I continue on? We'll continue for now. Okay. So inspection routing solution, what is that? So in the past, anybody who's a contractor or, or a building inspector, somebody who did multiple buildings, would have to you know, walk around and then maybe register if they had GPS on the cameras, you'd have places all over like this one, you're all over the place. You might not have a, a distinctive route of what you did. You might have created one, but it was all written on paper. If you ever want to transfer this information to someone else, a lot of explanation you got to show them. Well, with inspection, we may simplify it. We actually give you a guide to the, so it makes it easier to train someone else to do it now. You no longer have to kind of handhold everybody through it. How's that done? Well, you create a route using Thro FLIR Thermal Studio Pro, and there's a plugin you buy called Clear Inspection Route that allows you to create a route. You basically specify a location, 
a section, so let's say a site, a building, a room, and then a list of equipment. You can go down six levels, upload that into the camera. Now the operator or technician can have that information available with notes, and I'm going to show you that after, and then enter in all the correct information, and then bring it back to create a report. It makes it a lot easier instead of doing any manual writing. So there's no, no pads, there's no recording units. You don't have to do anything on your cell phone. It's all done on the camera, much more powerful. So basically, we don't want you to bring the notepad. That's basically, we don't want you to carry a notepad and paper. You don't need to anymore. You have everything you need on the camera. Here's an example of a screenshot from this camera. So number one thing is you can add notes to every single inspection equipment. Telling the person, call this guard to open the door. Here's a phone number. Don't touch. Go in hours. Whatever you want. You can put it all in here. And it shows up a little icon as a document that when you tap, it opens up this window with all the information that you need. You can cre create critical uh, statuses. Different colors. It's hidden by this image here, but there's actually the different color uh, dots you can put in, and you can do multiple levels. You can customize these. You can attach multiple images to one inspection equipment point. You don't need to have one image per. You know, you know. Sometimes I've heard people in the past they wanted to do an electrical room. They wanted to capture a picture of the of the room of the failure, but then they have to you know write comments for every single other picture representative to the same area. Well, this one one area can combine to one inspection point. You can write comments, and if you wanted to, you can actually record voice notes to that image that you captured. Inspection list allows you to see the next inspection point. So again, this is a plugin for Thermal Studio, and you need the camera to have that ability. Not all the cameras do, so make sure you check with your representative to see which ones do. That's it for my presentation portion of it. I can do a little demo of the Thermal Studio, but I can also take some questions. So. Uh, which one would you like me to do? Let's uh, take a uh, take a question or two uh, look for a couple minutes, and uh, then we'll go back to the demo and we'll come back to Q and A. Once again, please use the chat feature. You guys are really really uh, using it well so far, so please continue to. Uh, before we get into our next question, I just did want to uh, touch upon uh, Alec, your question about the camera with the hydrocarbons. Uh, we will have a technical sales specialist reach out to you after the webinar has concluded. Um, to talk to you about the, certain, the different options and your specific application. Uh, so next question uh, we have, so as a mechanical contractor, cost is a very significant factor for me. Um, which camera would you recommend uh, for this type of application for a mechanical contractor? Is, now the question would be, is this for their own use, for their own equipment inside the company, or is this offering a service of inspection? If they're offering a service, then they should get the, you know, it depends on distances. That, I would ask the same question. What's the smallest target you would want to measure at what distance? Because that'll tell us the resolution that you need. If it's are, you know, it's a quarter inch by a quarter inch at five feet, you don't need high resolution cameras. Then I'll ask you, well, do you need to do a lot of reports? Well, you need cameras that can do notes, routes, and so on and so forth. The cameras that don't have the ability to do notes, you're doing everything manually. And don't forget, when you don't have no capability, every time you take an image, you have to go preview, get the image number, write it down, whether it's on your iPhone or, I mean, on, on your tablet or phone or paper, and then go back and put it all together. Very cumbersome. And guess what can happen? With a lot of images, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to miss a number or whatever. And remember, these reports protect you and generate income for you. You make a mistake, it doesn't look good, and, you know, might even somebody get sued. You don't want that to happen. So mechanical contractor really depends on what you're trying to do with it. Perfect. And um, this is a great question to just kind of segue into having a specific question like this, uh, where you know you want suggestions, you want uh, some technical expertise. We at ITM Instruments, we have a team of uh, qualified and experienced technical sales staff that can point you in the right direction. We have outside sales guys across the country as well who can uh, go into your location. We'll, we'll just say asterisk COVID. Um, when, when, when possible, uh, to perform demonstrations and kind of give you a real hands-on approach uh, to guide you into the right direction. So please visit our website, itm.com. We have a contact us page. You can contact us via email, chat, phone, and we'll put you in the right direction. Uh, we do have a question about LRTI um, and the difference between, or I'll, I'll say it, uh, completely, uh, what is the con conceptual difference between a professional series and an LRTI? Freeman, what's the, what does LRTI mean? I don't, Long I don't know. Range. So Long I don't range. know. Why, yeah. Long so, range thermal picture? Like, is yeah. that what they're referring to? Okay. Uh, 
okay, so to give you an example, if you're looking at a hydro pylon and looking at the insulators that are 50 feet or higher in the air and you're trying to get accurate temperature, remember you're trying to make a decision. Do I need to do something now because there's a cracked insulator that's going to cause a problem for me and create a shutdown during the worst case time, or do I wait? You know, that's it all about depends on decision making. If and sometimes I've asked customers this: if you only care about above a certain temperature, let's say for industrial applications, say anything 50 degrees or 80 degrees and up, you know, that's what it matters to me. So okay, well you don't need the highest resolution, you don't need accuracy, you just want to know that over this temperature I need to do something. It might be enough fixes. So that. Always the same question. What's the smallest spot? What's the maximum distance? And then we're going to go from there as well. Uh, what camera would you use or does FLIR have a solution for fire detection? And as an example, an ASR pile or a fluff pile? It's a great question, actually. So in the same cameras that I showed you that are handheld, we have fixed cameras designed to run 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. What happens is, and actually the thermal camera is a huge advantage versus the, I have a smoke detector right above me and all. The problem with these smoke detectors is what? They only work when there is a fire or smoke. That means there's already damage happening. That's not good because even the damage has already started. Higher risk is you've got to get the fire department or somebody put it out. Thermal camera, if you're looking at a pile of something, tires, wood, whatever it may be and all that, you can program it that if it looks, like, you know, you can do a delta temperature. Say, I want to look at the ambient and the pile temperature. If the ambient, the delta is larger than such value, send out an alarm. The alarm is a digital signal, an email, upload an image, send out, you know, you can send out, you know, alarms. And I even have companies that design these auto robots that go drive over and put out a fire within, you know, with a hose and all that. Great advantage. So way be, the advantage is before there's a fire and damage, you're able to put it out. Low cost insurance premiums. You don't call the fire department. You don't have to do a report. You put it out. So big advantage. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. So what are applications? Uh, this is a pretty general question, but we'll go with it. What type of applications or what kind of applications of IR cameras uh, in the petrochemical industry other than identifying hotspots? Well, in petrochemical is looking for gas tips. That's a major, uh, you know, in a, my counterpart in Western Canada. Uh, Travis, he does a lot of gas detection. So we have specialized cameras that are designed to see, you actually see the gas leaks from distances. Where gas is, where the way it works is it absorbs infrared energy. We put specialized filtering to allow you to see those leaks from a far away distance. And you can even start doing leak rate detection. We have a special device that you're able to add to it as well. These are not your typical long wave cameras. These are specialized cameras in the market. And again, your ITM representative can give you all that information on it. Absolutely, and and I don't have your name uh, for the, for that question specifically, but we too will have someone follow up with you uh, to give you a little bit more of a detailed response and figure out uh, what best camera would suit your application. Uh, I think that's a good place to end right now. Maybe we'll go into the software demo, and then we'll go back to Q and A uh, to wrap it up. Not a problem. Okay, so I just want to show you guys quickly a demo of the Th Clear Thermal Studio. I'm going to again shut down my camera down to low bandwidth, and I'll put it back on, so you guys know that I'm still here. Um, okay, so this is FLIR Thermal Studio Pro, uh, very standard interface. Compared to, for those who are used to FLIR Tools Plus, it's very different. So it's not, you have to kind of relearn it, but it's easy. Once you figure it out, it's very easy. Uh, basic features is you have a library. We can create a blank report, generate a template, or if you just want to do a very quickness, you just click on the library, uh, pick in an image, let's just do uh, some MSX uh, images. Pick on an image, and then you can start analyzing, literally right on the spot. You, know, you can add tools, spot tools. You can add polyons, screen shapes, as I mentioned before. You know anything you want. Basically, uh, you can do a magic wand. So you say, okay, give me a reference for this. It'll automatically create a tool for you. It shows you the min, max, and average all listed right here. All these can be renamed. We even give you the ability to put icons and you can write text. And I love this feature actually, because now you want to tell someone, hey, I have a problem. Well, you can use text. Say, okay, I'm going to put, well, I'm going to say, uh oh. Obviously, you could change the size of it and all that, but you know, um, and then there you, know, you can put text on these icons and really fill it up with whatever you want. Now, I'm going to get rid of all this because I want to show you guys something that's really cool that we don't talk about enough. We've had this question come up a lot. Do you guys notice that you can see the needle gauges on a thermal image 
That's FLIR's proprietary MSX. This is our patent MSX technology. This is the visible image. So the camera was able to capture a visible image, visible image and a thermal image at the same time. But normally, a thermal image does this. Remember, we're seeing temperature. We're not seeing details. You would never be able to see the gauges with a regular thermal camera without the MSX. You might have heard of fusion. Fusion is actually something we invented a long time ago. This is fusion. The problem with fusion is this. You get a percentage of thermal overlaid percentage of visible. So this had less thermal, more visible. But if I increase it for more thermal, here, I'm just going to give the barrier a little bit more here, then I lose my visible. So now I want to see, I want to do a comparison of these two motors. I want to get the temperature reading. Well, I can't because I don't have the data. So I lose my gauge. I don't know what the pressure gauge or the pump rate was and all that. So I lose this. So this is fusion. The problem is it's you're getting percent. You pay for 100% for a camera, but you can only use 50% of it or you know, a certain percentage to the visible. Or the blending features is a very similar option as well. It's kind of overlaid, so it doesn't really give you the full details. Clear's patented MSX technology gives you 100% thermal overlaid with the visible detail on top of it. So that's where you're able to see the needle gauges as well. Okay. Um, so you want to create a report? I'm just going to pick a little uh, report right here. I'll choose one. I'm going to use this one. I like using this one. So, electrical site, you see there's GPS map, there's coordinates. You choose a template. So, you have an option to report. You choose your template. I have created a template called Basic Criticality with Summary Map. Select it. Boom, it's going to create a report based on template. Remember, you can create a rapid shortcut of that template on your desktop. Drag those images. So you don't even have to open the software. You just drag them off your camera and you can just open this whole thing for you right there. So let it do the, the report. So the great thing is now if there's GPS coordinates attached to the images, you'll see a summary map of where these images were taken. It will show you a summary list of all the equipment. On inspection, it actually shows you a summary list of all the inspection points and statuses and all that. I won't get into it, it gets a little complicated too, but I don't have enough time, but I'll show you this one. So you have your thermal, excuse me, your thermal and visible with a map, and then you have your plotting if you want to as well. But notice this, now you have, look at this here, repair next time. Let's look at the next one, normal, repair next time, and then repair immediately. These are automatic formulas that will give you a automatic condition rating or comment based on the formula that was created. This was something I had done. So we, by default, we give you a formula called the default rating formula that have specific messages and colors, and then you can create your own. And what that does is when you load the images, it automatically will give you a status based on what's in the image. Looking at box, man, just a certain spot. You can change that as a wish. But what's nice is you don't have to, your analysis is done for you. Great feature of that. Now, obviously, the most powerful feature of Clear Tool, the Thermal Studio Pro is batch processing. I can change emissivity, palettes. I can just choose something, apply it, like choose multiple points, apply it to thousands of images, click uh, process. It'll, what it does is it doesn't erase your original images. It actually creates copies of the changes and keeps your original and it creates a new folder. You can change tons of things. This is batch processing. You have panorama as well, where you can do image stitching. So if you have an option where you want to make an image larger, uh, you know, in case of being is, I'll do this one here, uh, substation I did it before. You know, you, you don't have the right lens, you can't get a wide enough angle lens, but you want to create a larger image. Well, you go panorama, do select it, then you do next right here, create panorama. Now you created a single radiometric image that I can do analysis from across all points. I don't have to take a temperature here, get out, go back to this one, get out, go back to this one, get out, go back to this one to compare temperature points. I can do it all across one image. I can do my deltas and everything else comparison all in one. I can crop it, rotate it if I wanted to and all that. I get all the information. And there was a visible image, it would have cropped it, would have uh, stitched it together as well. Okay. And the routing feature, this is, I love this one. Routing is, if you think about this, I want to create a route. Instead of writing it down, tell this person, go to this building, walk in, do this, do that. I just literally creating the software. I'll take one right here. I upload this, let's say I go down six levels. So I do a location, a building, a sector, equipment room, and I'll go on six levels. And per point, I can write comments that show up as little 
little uh, icon on the screen and you tap it and it shows up the notes right away for you. So you're able to read, to instruct, you tell them there's a phone number, a code for a lock or whatever the case may be, you know, like, you know, keys under the carpet and then upload that information to the camera and the person can be able to access that and be able to view it and follow along and upload. And then what happens is when you go back, you go pull out the inspection file that was created. Let's say, take this one. I think this was the right one. Yeah. Well, no, I didn't choose the right one. Let's try another one. This one. And then I could do next. Yeah, okay, I'll just put the images into it. And then I'll just generate report, and then you could choose the same thing. Uh, generates a report to whatever template I chose, and it'll show you the statuses if there's any indicating or not. So that's a very quick overview. Again, uh, that's, you know, we need more time for it, but I just want to give it a very quick overview for everybody. Any questions? Plenty. <laughs> so, um, so we'll just take a moment. Manny, thank you very much uh, for the presentation. Thank you for uh, cutting into it and taking questions throughout. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for all the questions that, you, uh, that you're pouring into us. Um, great, great uh, example and result that this is a fantastic topic uh, that stretches across everyone. Um, so as mentioned earlier, this is the time to uh, take advantage of having Manny on with us today. We have a little over 10 minutes. We will be respectful of all your time. Um, so we'll get right on into it. Uh, if you have anything, please use the chat feature. Um, I will say very quickly, if you have any questions relating to, and I, we did have a couple come in um, from Louis, uh, something very, very specific in terms of application, we will follow up with you after the webinar. Uh, we'll have our uh, one of our technical sales reps reach out to you to make sure that we can um, put you in the right direction in terms of suggestion based on all the details that you provided us. And that uh, thank you for that. Also, we did have a question that came in um, in terms of legality and export. Uh, Fletcher, I believe that was yourself. Uh, we will also touch upon that um, directly with you. Uh, if you have anything about that, please feel free to reach out. Uh, but one of our technical sales staff will reach out to you uh, directly to, uh, to answer that question. So, uh, great question pertaining to the software. Are reports able to be customizable to companies? Yes. So with the Clear Thermal Studio, there's three versions. There's a starter version that doesn't allow you to customize, it's free. There's a standard which allows you some, maybe five or something like that. And then the Pro, you can do pretty much anything you want with it. So yes, the templates, you comes with default that you can change any which way you want. So there's no limitation for your logos, your legal uh, disclaimers, anything can be put in. And then it becomes a template file that the person creating the report just has to hold the pictures in it generates a report. If you put formulas, then it automatically does the analysis uh, detection for you and all that. So everything is preset automatically. Fantastic. Um, another question came in um, asking about if you could elaborate a little more on how the ambient air temperature in front of the lens or in front of the camera or, uh, it, or your component, I guess, between camera and component uh, will impact the result of the temperature. So what they're talking about, if I understand correctly, so the way the, temp the thermal camera measures temperature is this. It looks at its internal temperature to what it sees as energy. That's how it does it. And there's something called a drift of this. And that's one of Clear's proprietary abilities. Our cameras, we, we call them, we have a great drift compensation, so we're able to give you the right accuracy at all times, right? We're not deviating. Over time, when the cameras heat up, because they've been running, like your cell phone, if you use your cell phone for a long period of time, it gets hot. Same thing with the camera. You've been using it for a while, it gets hot. Well, that's going to change the values of what it's reading. If you don't properly adjust for that drift, your value of the measurements is off. FLIR has proprietary technology. We're one of the best in the world. Nobody can beat us in that. And that's one thing we always talk about. And that, that was actually especially critical in the COVID, well, still in the COVID, because we, for accuracy, you have to be 0.3 degrees accurate for temperature. In the industrial world, we're within the plus or minus 2 degrees or 2%, depending on what range you're using. So that's very critical. I uh, hope that helps. So the way it measures temperature, it looks at the internal temperature to what it receives. Perfect, thank you. Quick reminder, please use the chat feature if we aren't able to uh, get to your questions during the presentation. As I've mentioned to a couple uh, participants individually, we will uh, answer your questions privately and directly after the webinar is concluded. Um, 
So, uh, the question that I actually want to answer, do you mind if I quickly just uh, read it uh, about calibration? Yes. yes. So, so, why do we need to calibrate the camera annually? Over the years, we were, you know, so great question. I, I always answer the same way. Do you have to go see a doctor every year? It depends. It depends on your health and all that. So, do we recommend it? Clear says we recommend you calibrate annually, but if you don't have to. If you have an insurance program that says we need to see your calibration certificate of everything you use that measures something, then you should calibrate the camera annually. But you don't have to. If, if the camera has been dropped, kicked, or thrown from a building, or left in a truck at minus 30 or plus 40 degree weather and all that, temperature reading should be correct. Remember, if it drifts a little bit, everything drifts. Everything will be off. How critical is it? A quick way that we always tell people, take a temperature. If you can check something that you know of, the right temperature. If you don't have a black body device to check the temperature like ITM does, they have devices to be able to do calibration checks for you. You can use water, bucket water of ice and water, bucket of water and ice, you know, make sure check the temperature. Is the camera reading zero? Great. If the camera is reading plus 10 or minus 10, then it needs to be calibrated. If it's off in calibration, does that matter to you? If it doesn't matter, you don't have to. So the question you ask me, do you need to calibrate? Sure. Yeah, do it annually if you can, but you don't have to. We work with some companies that require calibration every three months because that's the industry they're in. They send it into FLIR to calibrate. And remember, only FLIR can calibrate their camera, meaning factory spec. We our technicians go in and make sure everything's properly calibrated. Make sure just make sure you understand that. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Uh, we do have a couple questions based on um, the One Pro. Uh, so the, the One Pro and Compact. Once again, I'll uh, just quickly run over it. A customer um, and participant uh, has a One Pro. They usually they use it in a manufacturing facility. The camera has been good to find certain hot spots uh, on panels and across the site. Um, they're asking for a little bit of recommendation on maybe looking at something a little bit um, more uh, applicable uh, to their to their application. Remember, I said to you before, we offer a solution for everything, right? One Pro has a purpose. As long as it's not designed for decision making, just a quick check. <laughs> and if you want to see something is overheating, you don't care the temperature. And if you can get close enough to the device, great. But if you have to be a safe distance of five feet because of NFPA 70 or whatever, then you can't. Then it tells you, oh, it's hot, but I don't know the temperature. That's okay. Then you should choose the right device for that. How to choose it? We'll ask the questions and qualify. What is the smallest target at what distance? And we go from there. Perfect. We did have another question about the uh, recommended um, camera and lens option for an electrical inspection and reporting. I'll just remind, we did touch upon that a little bit earlier uh, in the presentation. That is the type of question that we at ITM Instruments and our technical staff can address with you directly. Uh, so this is, once again, we will get in contact with you directly and we'll definitely have a couple suggestions. Um, another thing that, that does come up often is, and we do have a question about it, um, ITM does have a rental program and does have a rent, rental option. We have many different thermal cameras uh, available uh, in our rental fleet. So there is that option uh, to rent to own, uh, rent before purchasing. Uh, we have a, a great rental coordinator as well as our technical sales staff can help you and point you in the right direction, again, to try and get your hands on a camera prior to making a purchase. Definitely, uh, definitely something that we do quite often. Um, let's see. To the petrochemical uh, follow-up, we did have a follow-up uh, about this. So uh, this participant mentioned that uh, they have uh, employees who use a thermal camera to measure the fluid levels in tanks. Mm -hmm. Would this be any type of camera or would you think or would you recommend maybe a higher resolution? I mean, as long as the camera is sensitive enough, and, and you can see if you can see it with a FLIR one, great. You know, obviously it depends on the distance. Is the person getting enough of an angle close enough and they'd be able to see? Sure. As long as it, it depends on what you're trying to achieve. For quick reference and not much detail and precision, that's fine. But if you need precision, then no. Sure. Just to go back quickly, first to the ambient temperature, one thing I forgot to mention is air. So if you're outside or there's air movement in front of a target it will affect temperature reading. So the ambient air temperature, especially outside, that's where it matters the most. You need to make sure you understand that there is impact. As soon as you, you know, the evaporative effect will impact temperature reading. All that's, okay? Um, we do have a couple of questions about battery replacements, basically stating that certain batteries do degrade over time. 
Um, so are there battery replacements? And we'll just generalize in all counts. No. So player one, C5, no battery replacement. Anything that has a battery that can come out and put in, yes, there is batteries that we sell you battery options as well. You have a two-year parts and labor, or you have it uh, from, from clear, or you have a 10-year under detector. But if you need batteries, call ITM and they'll get you the part and they'll be able to replace the battery. But clear one, CX series, unfortunately, no batteries. Fantastic. Uh, so let's see. This is a fun one. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, can you please provide information on standards, requirements uh, based on equipment or training level uh, that is needed for inspection, data collection, or uh, creating and offering reports for residential, wow. commercial, or industrial sites? Wow, okay, that's a, that's a very big question, but basically is this. The residential 322.40 minimum is required. I always say that, don't go anything less because you're just playing guessing games. Remember, and don't charge little because if you undercharge, you basically give away, you're giving your reports away, it loses its value. Customer last week did a presentation, I was, I was in another webinar, I do a lot of them by the way, and uh, <laughs> he said they went, he increased his prices by 85% and he gained 75% more customers because people took it more seriously, right? You got to look at it that way. If you just say, I am a building inspector, I'll throw in a thermal inspection, you devaluate de the option. So don't do that, right? And especially don't, don't try and do home inspection with a flare one, guys. It doesn't, I mean, you're walking with a cell phone. If you go see a doctor with a flare one, say, I'm going to check you out with your x-ray, you got to look at it that way. Remember, it's the perception of what is being offered. Mechanic is never going to take out a little phone device and start checking your car. He's got the professional equipment, he's plugging into your car, checking things out. So look at it that way. Residential 322.40, you get into commercial and industrial 640.480, and if you get into high industrial, the, the T1020, which is higher associations. Certification, level one is only to look at anomalies. Not supposed to be by ASNRT, ASNT standards, uh, we follow through ITC, level one is not really supposed to do reporting. It's level two who does reports. A lot of insurance companies and governments and all that nowadays ask you to have a level two certification to be able to show me your proof that you know how to generate a report. People have been doing it for years using level one, but in actuality, you're not supposed to generate a report with level one. Perfect. So uh, we are coming up at the uh, to the bottom slash top of the hour. Uh, we do want to be respectful of everyone's time. Um, there were a few questions that came in that we were not able to answer. Um, as mentioned previously and multiple times throughout the presentation, we will address any questions that were not answered during the presentation directly. Um, so look out for an email or a phone call from one of our technical sales representatives. So I do want to take, them, uh, take a moment to thank Manny very much for the presentation. Thank you for answering all the questions in great detail. Pleasure. And I want to thank everyone. <laughs> I want to thank everyone for joining us today. So on behalf of ICM University, thank you very much. Um, we hope that you found it informative and helpful. <clears throat> we are available to assist you, address any questions. Please visit our website, itm.com. You can go to the contact us page to find our email address, our phone number. You can chat live with a technical sales representative as well. You'll also find our entire list of FLIR cameras and solutions, pricing, availability everything that your heart desires. Uh, at the end of this webinar, we will have a short survey that uh, we do ask you to please kindly complete. Your feedback will help us uh, improve these webinars and bring you subjects that are of interest to you. Uh, we do have upcoming webinars over the course of the next few weeks and months. Uh, so please visit our training section on the website uh, for our full calendar and list of subjects uh, for upcoming webinars. And don't forget that as a thank you for attending today's webinar, your name will go into a draw to win $100 for your next online purchase. The winner will be announced on our social media channel, so please be sure to check us out there. Thank you once again, everyone, for joining us today. Manny, a big thank you to you as well, and have a great rest of the day. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day, guys.